my name is Dolly. It's very nice to meet you here. It is my honor that I can be here today present for Mr. Chu Lin from the Vietnam Film Club. He's planned to set up the interview with you um, to show the appreciation of your cooperation and support for this documentary and share your opinion um, with the past and the experience that you have. So this documentary will be filmed by the Vietnam Film Club and share and kept it for life. So it is my honor. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah. So before we get started, can you briefly have something briefly about yourself? My name is Fred Raymond and I, I'm a retired Major General in the United States Army. But more importantly, I served in Vietnam, South Vietnam, in 1968 and 1969, from January 1968 to August 1969. So I was there for a year and a half in an infantry unit, uh, most of the time in the field, in the mountains. I know that you and your wife had took a few trips back to Vietnam after um, the 1975. So what is the purpose of those trips? Well, I always wanted to see the rest of the country. And most of my experiences in, in when I was there during the conflict was in the mountains, sometimes in the coastal area, down around Phu Bai, which is maybe 12 kilometers south of Hue in that area for a few months, but most of the time in the mountains. And, that, and I was very limited in what I saw on the ground. I flew over different places, but I never saw a lot on the ground. So I wanted to go back there and see places I've never been to, like the Delta. I've never been to the Delta. I've never been in the Highlands, so we went to the lot. I've never been, even though I was all around Way, I'd never been to the city of Way. I wanted to see Way. And then we took a trip up north. I wanted to go to Ha Long Bay, and we went to Hanoi, and then Ha Long Bay. So I got to see the country far more than I did when I was there during the conflict. So it was more like uh, just learning about the learning about the country and seeing more of the country. Well, wow, that's so wonderful. I think you went back there and you visited more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so your sharing today really benefit. For me too, I really appreciate mm -hmm. that. So you and your wife have went back several times, many times, and mm -hmm. you have to visit different places in Vietnam, mm -hmm. and then you witnesses the change from the country, good side, bad side after the war. So, in your opinion, in your opinion, what is need the society does the change to target too, so to strengthen the region to develop the which classes of society, so the government changes for their own good or really for the people in there? What do you think? No, I think the, uh, the, the government, all communist governments are all about themselves. It's all about the hierarchy and staying in power. So they help the people if it helps them stay in power. It's just that simple. If, it, if the people are in the way of staying in power, then the people have a problem. So that's just the way they operate. But they do, but they want to advance the country. Uh, and I'd say probably after 2000, it, they really started to steamroll the progress in the country, especially in infrastructure. For instance, we took a trip down to Cantal, and they tell us that, you know, they have built a couple of bridges over the Mekong River and the Cantal River, uh, huge expansion bridges. And previously, they used ferries to move people across the rivers. And that was a huge economic uh, development for that part of the country because they could move products and people easily across the rivers. Uh, they built, uh, I remember when I was there in 68, 69, Route 1, the main route up the coast from Saigon to Hanoi, was a two-lane road and most of it, and some of it was gravel. I mean, it was, wasn't well built. Now it's a four-lane highway with toll gates on it. Can you imagine that? The Communist Party found something in the capitalist system that they like, so they put tolls in there so they can collect money from the people. Where as the world turns, I guess. Anyway, the country is a lot more developed than I recall, and I tell people that you know if you're going, some of my uh, compatriots there fought in Vietnam with me. I say, if you're going back to the country, it's not the country that you knew when you were there. This is a, a different country now. It's well-developed. Uh, most of the people are 
are young and they weren't even alive during the conflict. So what they know about America is what they hear and read about it. They don't have no recollection of the war because they weren't even alive or if they were they were very small and it didn't affect them. So it's a different country. Some for good, some not so good. Because people now, they may have jobs but, they, but their ability, in my view, to reach their full capability to be whatever they want to be is somewhat curtailed by the communist regime. They can only go so high. If you're not in the communist party, if you're not, if your family's not connected to the communist party, you can only go so far in that country. You're going to be stymied. You're going to hit the glass ceiling. It's just that simple. And that's a shame because a lot of the young people are very ambitious and they're very smart and they want to get ahead and they want to make money and they want to do well. and. My wife and I taught at Natrang University during a summer session one year, and I was really impressed with the students. I, but I felt, in my heart, I felt sorry for them because I knew that they were, they were limited, what they could do. Even though they were talented, they weren't going to be able to do all they were capable of doing. And that's, and that's a shame. But that's the communist regime. That's just how it operates. So I feel sorry for them, uh, but, you know, we helped them. Uh, my wife taught a computer science class and at night we taught an English, conversational English class for them. And they were all good students, they worked hard, uh, and mostly from, uh, they, it wasn't the uh, ultra-rich families, it weren't people from the Communist Party, they were the common people that were in that class at Natrang University. But it was a rewarding experience and especially insightful seeing the students and how hard they worked, how smart they were. So there's big changes in the country. Uh, they're also the government that recognizes that the economy is, is kind of at a, a, uh, a low. They can only go so far given what they have in the country. So they're in trying to entice Western corporations to set up factories in Vietnam and produce their products there so they can uh, make employment for Vietnamese citizens. And, and that's good for the citizens. They get they get a job that's well paying and, uh, and, and that's, that part of it is, is good but uh, the ultimate benefit is for the Communist Party, for the, com for the government. So I, I guess I kind of applaud the government for trying to get Western technology and companies in there because it's, it's good for the, for the people to have a job that's well paying, they can live their life like they want. Uh, so in that respect, they, they made some progress. The infrastructure, big deal with uh, partnering with the Japanese and to some extent the Koreans to build a lot, a lot of the Japanese uh, firms are the ones that are doing the major construction projects. Uh, but they're all good and they're good for the people. Uh, so I guess, you know, they, they get kudos for that part of it. My, my only problem with, with uh, the country now is, is that it limits people and what they're able to do and that and that's really a shame. Well thank you so much for your share of your thoughts. So that's a part of the country you see the government have done a lot of things but for their own good but not really for the people who live there. So you travel from the city to the countryside so what do you see about people in Vietnam comparison people in city and the people in countryside? Are they have the same knowledge? Are they understand the government, the economy, the system, the whole thing is the same or they have cut a different level? Well, I think the uh, school system in the urban areas is probably better. In the rural areas, they're probably limited. Uh, the schools are limited probably in the, and my guess would be the quality of the, of the instructors, the teachers. Uh, I think the people in the city are probably more aware of uh, the effects of the communist government because they see a lot of tourists, they see and they talk to them and they know more about what's going on outside of Vietnam from talking to people and seeing the different tourists that come through there. Uh, the people in the, in the rural areas are probably more uh, confined to the area where they live and that, what they know is what they see and what they hear locally. So I would say the city the, the, especially the youth in the city, they clearly know, they clearly know what's going on. Not only in their country, but elsewhere. So based on your great experience, what 
the message or what do you think that you can share with the youth in Vietnam, young people, about the development of the country, how to preserve the culture? Well, I think, the, you know, they just, they just have to persevere. They need to try even if it's, if their full efforts are not going to be rewarded. They should not, they should not just uh, accept what's going on. Just keep, work hard, strive, learn as much as you can, work as hard as you can, and be, uh, be all you can be. Uh, that's probably the best advice I can give them. There's going to be times when you're going to get stymied because of the way the government is structured, but you shouldn't let that deter you from being the best you can be uh, in your life and in your work. Thank you. There's a lot of questions I want to ask you, but I know that you have a limited time and I don't want to take too much of your time. So is there anything else that you want to add into my film, my, my South Vietnam film, so we can have more color, more diversity, um, anything that you want to add on to make the film more um, with a, a lot more information that I don't want to take out of your time. Yeah. So to present in the Vietnam, because you were there during Vietnam and after the war too. I really, I really appreciate where the country is now with the people. I, I, I think everybody that I served with in Vietnam would say the same thing, that the people in Vietnam are very, were very friendly when we were there back, in, back during the war. They, they, were, uh, they liked Americans and they were very friendly to Americans and, and for the most part the Americans were friendly to them. Um, so that, and I think that carries over now. In the country now, the people, they, they like Americans. Uh, and, that, and when somebody likes you, you kind of reciprocate that. So it's easy to like them because they like you. But I like the people. Uh, I really like the country. Uh, the, fa the fact is I could, I could live in Vietnam today if it wasn't for the government. I just, I, <laughs> I just can't come to grips with that. I just don't like the communist government there or anywhere for that matter because it's just the way they treat the people. The people, in my opinion, the people back in the 60s when I was there, they had a lot more freedom than they have right now. Um, and that's a shame because they, they don't deserve that. They deserve more. And maybe one day it will all change. We can only hope. Thank you very much for your input. This is really greatly appreciated. Very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you.